What is the system of limits and fits? The system of limits and fits is the use of tolerance classes, which is essentially a combination of a letter and a number to indicate the tolerance of a dimension. The logical question arises, why do we need such a system instead of simply indicating the deviation? Why say 30 G7 instead of just pointing 30 plus 0 0.007 plus 0 0.028? I will answer this question at the end of the video, but before that, we need to understand a few fundamental concepts about fits. A fit is the degree of tightness or looseness between two mating parts. The fit can be classified as either clearance fit, interference fit or transitional fit, depending on the amount of space between the parts. Let's look at this example. A shaft and a hole pair. On the drawing, both the hole diameter and the shaft has a dimension of 30 millimeters. This is called the nominal diameter. But depending on the specified tolerances, the real parts will have a different measured diameter than the nominal diameter. Clearance fit is when the two parts have a gap between them at any allowable tolerance combination which allows for movement and makes assembly and disassembly easier. In our example, if you can guarantee using tolerances that the hole is always bigger than the shaft, then it's a clearance fit. For example, the hole is tolerated 30 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.1 and the shaft is 30 minus 0 minus 0 0.1. Then, all combinations of shafts and holes will result in a hole bigger than the shaft. Let's mark the areas in the hole where we are sure that there is material. Also, draw a rectangle for the tolerance area where these, where there could be material or not, depending on the real measured part. This is the tolerance zone of the hole. Now, with a different color, let's mark the area of the shaft where there will be material for sure and also mark the area where there could be material or not depending on the tolerance. This is the tolerance zone rectangle for the shaft. Now we see that there is always a gap between the shaft and the hole. The smallest possible gap would be 0 0.05 but there could be also a gap of 0.2, depending on the real parts. So this is a clearance fit with a minimum clearance of 0.05 and a maximum clearance of 0.2. An interference fit, on the other hand, is when the two parts are pressed or pushed together and cannot be easily separated. In this case, the biggest possible hole is always smaller than the smallest possible shaft. For example, the hole is tolerated 30 minus 0.05 minus 0.1 and the shaft is 30 plus 0 plus 0.1. In this case, you see that there is always material overlapping. The minimum interference is 0.05. But if tolerances are used fully to their limits, a maximum interference of minus 0 0.2 is possible. You might ask, how on earth would the assembly of an interference fit be successful? If a shaft is bigger than the hole, how can it be assembled inside the hole? Well, that depends on the materials and adaptation. But one method is using liquid nitrogen to shrink the shaft, then it's assembled and expands inside the hole, resulting in an extremely tight interference fit. In other cases, where the fit is not so tight and the materials are more elastic, a hammer could be sufficient to mount the shaft. A transition fit is where in some tolerance combinations, the shaft could be bigger than the hole and in some combinations, it could be smaller. For example, both the hole and the shaft are tolerated 30 
plus minus 0.05. You see, there are combinations where a clearance of 0.1 is possible, but also cases where an interference of 0.1 is possible. So, two factors influence the type of the fit. One, the position of the tolerance zone. Two, the width of the tolerance zone. There is a standard system that uses letters and numbers to indicate the position and the width of the tolerance zone for both the shaft and the hole, instead of writing the tolerance zone limits directly on the drawing, for example, 30 at 7. The letter H indicates the position of the tolerance zone and is called fundamental diffusion. And the number here, 7, indicates the width of the tolerance zone this is called tolerance grade. The width depends on the manufacturing precision, so a more precise process results in a smaller possible width for the tolerance zone. The system is called the ISO system of limits and fits. So the letter indicates the position of the tolerance zone by providing a fundamental deviation to the nominal dimension. This fundamental deviation is found on the lookup table ISO 286 part 1. If the specification for a hole is 30H8, for example, then you find the fundamental deviation that corresponds to the diameter 30 and the letter H, which is zero. So, the position of the tolerance zone is on the nominal dimension line, also known as the zero line. If the specification was 30 G7, then the fundamental deviation is plus 7 microns, which is 0.007 millimeters. Notice that the letter is written in capital format, and that's because the capital letters are used for holes and small letters are used for shafts. Now we know the position of the tolerance zone, but what is the width? Let's look at the tolerance grade. So the indication was 30 G7. We look up IT7 in the lookup table. Fundamental tolerances in the same ISO 286 part 1. For diameter 30 and IT7, the fundamental tolerance, or the width, is 21 microns, so 0.021 millimeters. For shafts, it's the same procedure. If a shaft tolerance class is H8, and notice here the small letter for shafts, then we look up the H in the fundamental deviation table and we find it to be zero. We look up the IT8 in the fundamental tolerance table and we find it 33 microns, so 0.033 millimeters. Now we see that the resulting fit of the 30 G7H8 is a clearance fit, with a minimum possible clearance of 0.007 millimeters and a maximum possible clearance of 0.068 which is 0 0.028 plus 0 0.033. Congratulations! Now you understand fits and limits and can do their calculations effectively. There is one more thing to know though. When designing a fit, either the hole or the shaft should have the letter H, because H is the letter that results in the position starting from the zero line, which makes it's simpler to design and calculate if one, either the hole or the shaft is at the zero line. If the hole is chosen to have the letter H, it is called a hole-based system. And if the shaft has the letter H, it's a shaft-based system. Now, to answer your question, why do we need such a system? Imagine you are designing a part to be manufactured by external suppliers. Wouldn't discussing achievable tolerances for each dimension be a tedious and time-consuming task? Especially when dealing with a large number of dimensions and multiple suppliers. 
Manufacturers cannot provide a universal tolerance for all dimensions since achievable tolerances vary with the size of the feature. Smaller parts can generally be produced with greater precision than larger ones. To address this, each supplier could theoretically provide a table correlating tolerances to feature sizes, but this would lead to inconsistencies. The ISO system of fates and limits solves this problem by providing such tables, standardized table of size-dependent tolerance grades. This allows suppliers to simply indicate which tolerance grades they can achieve. For example, a supplier could say, I can reach IT4 with my process. This way, you can look up which tolerance zone with is achievable for your design. Furthermore, suppliers of standard components such as bearings often recommend specific fits for optimal performance and designers can easily look up the corresponding tolerances for the required size using the ISO tables. This standardization streamlines communication, ensures compatibility and facilitates an efficient, cost-effective production process. If you would like to dive deeper in engineering design topics, visit our website excedify.com for courses, certifications, engineering tools and other resources.